Hello and welcome back to anyone and everyone watching. Today's the second edition of my weekly Silly Season Summary. This week we got absolutely nuked with new team driver and sponsor announcements in all three series and even ARCA. It's barely even December and already with the truck series especially, this is going to be one of the wildest off seasons in recent memory. So without further ado, strap in, this might be a long one. And a quick disclaimer here, I am recording this on Friday. So if uh, anything crazy drops tomorrow on Saturday, I'll either make a separate video for that later in the week or else I will just include that in next week's uh, weekly recap. Anyway, the first story that absolutely took the entire racing world by storm. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, the FDNY Racing Team announced they will be back part-time in 2023 with Brian Dazo. Daza, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his name. He'll be piloting their signature number 28 truck in the season opener at Daytona. Many, including myself before making this video, probably didn't know that the FDNY team is the only remaining team in the truck series to have competed in the truck series inaugural 1995 season. Uh, the team consists of volunteers from the New York Police and Fire Departments, hence its name, and they donate all their earnings to charity. Uh, Brian has been around in the truck series since 2014 while running for his own team in the NASCAR Wheeland Modified Ring since all the way back in 2008. Typically in trucks, Brian will run the super speedways and a handful of other oval races over the course of the season. His career highlight came back in the 2018 Talladega race, where he finished a very impressive 8th place, which is his only top 10 in the truck series to date. Last year, Brian started off with a solid 23rd place run at Daytona, but unfortunately was not able to race at Pocono after qualifying was rained out, and he wound up 35th at Talladega after getting caught up in an early wreck. So hopefully the FDNY racing team will once again be able to make the show at Daytona and avoid all the guaranteed carnage. Next up, also truck series news, Dean Thompson was announced to be the fourth full-time driver for Tricon Garage, formerly known as David Gilland Racing. He'll be joined alongside the previously announced Corey Heim, Tanner Gray, and Taylor Gray. Dean, who's only 21 years old, came onto the racing scene strong in 2020 and 2021, where he won back-to-back -back track championships in the late model division at the highly competitive Irwindale Speedway. This caught the attention of Nice Motorsports, as after a decent part-time season in the Arco West Series in 2021, including a runner-up finish at Irwindale Speedway with High Point Racing, Nice offered him a truck ride for the 2021 season finale at Phoenix. Dean stayed out of trouble and brought it home in 21st, definitely a respectable finish for his first ever start. This confirmed to the team they should hire Dean full-time in 2022, however their season did not go as planned. Despite his teammate Carson Hosevar contending for wins and making the playoffs, Dean was unable to score a single top 10 the entire year and came in a disappointing 23rd in the final standings. While he did start off great in the second race of Las Vegas with an 11th place finish, it was all downhill from there as he only finished top 20 four more times and never even finished higher than 21st in the final nine races. Dean clearly has talent based on his late model accomplishments, so as long as he has good funding, I think it is fair for him to get another shot with a good team this coming season. Joe Gibbs Racing announced the first driver for their Xfinity program this Thursday with Sammy Smith, who will be going full-time to number 18. After a very impressive Arcus season this year in which he scored 9 wins between the National and East Series as well as the East Series Championship and showed flashes of potential in select Xfinity stars for JGR, it was really no surprise at all that he would be back for a full rookie season in 2023. Also returning back in the form of sponsorship will be Flying J, or Pilot Flying J, who had previously sponsored Michael Annette until his retirement at the end of 2021. Sammy's main ARCA sponsor, TMC Transportation, will also be coming on for multiple races alongside Allstate, Peterbilt, Renda Group, Sinclair Tractor, and Mobile One. I expect Sammy to get at least one win next season for sure to make the playoffs, but I do not see him being a championship threat until at least 2024. On Thursday, we got more news from the Joe Gibbs Racing Team. As it was announced, John Hunter Nemechek would be driving the number 20 car full-time, while Ryan Truex would be returning part-time for a six-race schedule in the number 19 car. For John, this is finally the opportunity he's been so close to for so long now. I do believe he'll need to have a breakout season right away, however, if he wants to get looked at seriously by any top cup teams and prevent from going down further on the Justin Allgaier path. If all goes well and he gets multiple wins and goes deep into the playoffs, I can absolutely see 2311 Racing opening up a third car for him or Joe Gibbs Racing promoting him as the replacement for Martin Truex Jr. 
Now for Martin's brother, Ryan, I would say his part-time deal is beyond fair, as in his five races for the team this past season, he underperformed in my opinion, with only three top tens and one top five. Also, besides Atlanta, he was never in contention for any wins, unlike the other main part-time driver of the 18 car, Trevor Bain, was in many of his starts. I would say Ryan's expectations for the next season are pretty much just to get a win, and if not, to at least finish top 10 in every race. And while I will be rooting for him at this point, I unfortunately do not see him being able to do that. In other Xfinity Series news, the other main Toyota team, Sam Hunt Racing, released their 2023 lineup, and I personally cannot be more pleased with it, as Kaz Grawl will finally get the opportunity he deserves going full-time in their flagship number 26 car, and Connor Mozak will race the 24 car for 20 races. Back in 2017, everyone in the racing world had their eyes on Kaz Grawl when he became the youngest driver to ever win at Daytona with his season-opening win in the Truck Series. After putting together a good rest of his season, even for GMS racing standards, with one win, five top fives, and 11 top tens, and a seventh-place points finish, Kaz was rather unjustly kicked to the curb following 2017. Ever since then, he's been putting together part-time deals wherever he can, and more often than not, severely outperforming his equipment, most notably when replacing a sick Austin Dillon at the Daytona Road Course in what would become his cup debut, where he led three laps and came home a stunning seventh place. That officially put Grella back on everyone's radar, and he would soon go on to score another Cup Series top 10 the following year for Colleg Racing at Talladega in one of only three starts that season. Then this year, he competed for a variety of smaller teams in the Xfinity and Truck Series, where he again impressed with a fifth-place run at Watkins Glen for Big Machine Racing, as well as a seventh in Young's Motorsports equipment in the Truck Series Mid-Ohio race. Grawler will absolutely be a threat to win on road courses and super speedways, but unfortunately I don't think the Sam Hunt racing cars are quite up to standard for regular oval tracks. We saw John Hunter Nemechek come close for them this season with a fourth place at Darlington, but unless everything goes perfectly, I do not think an intermediate or short track win will be seen by the 26 team. Now for the other 2023 Sam Hunt racing driver, Connor Mozak was also coincidentally a road course specialist. This year, Connor put together two Xfinity starts with the best finish of 15th for Sam Hunt Racing at Watkins Glen, in addition to four top fives and seven top tens and only eight national ARCA stars for Brett Holmes Racing. Overall, Mozak is very inexperienced in NASCAR, so as long as he nets a couple top tens and hopefully a top five at one of the many road courses on the Xfinity schedule, I will definitely call his season a success. Next up, Carson Hosevar will be back full-time for Nice Motorsports this coming season, but this time with a year-long sponsorship from WWEX Racing. WWEX, or Worldwide Express, sponsored Carson for the majority of his races this year in trucks, as well as both track house racing drivers, Ross Chastain and Daniel Suarez, in select cup races. Hosevar certainly impressed this past season, but it was rather agonizing to see how close he got to winning without actually ever getting one on top of seeing him fall apart right away in the playoffs. This coming season, I definitely hope to see Carson get at least one win and make it deeper in the playoffs, and also preferably not be involved in any more race manipulation incidents. Next is even more Truck Series news, as McAnally Hilgman Racing came out with their 2023 driver lineup, which will consist of Christian Eckes and Jake Garcia. As I said on last week's episode, Colby Howard, one of their drivers last season, is being linked to GMS Racing right now, so it does not shock me at all that he will not be rejoining the team. However, what does shock me is Derek Krause leaving. McAnally Hilgman Racing brought Derek up with him from the ARCA West Series for both the team and driver's first truck season back in 2020, where Derek, the previous year's ARCA West champion, immediately showed he could be competitive, scoring three top fives, including a runner-up at Darlington, and 13 top 10s, although just barely missing the playoffs and finishing 11th overall. After that promising start, Derek has honestly shown no improvement, as in 2021 he came up a whopping 2 top 5s and 9 top 10s short of the previous season, and his average finish plummeted from a 13.0 to a 19.7. This year, Kraus fared better than in 2021, but was still nowhere close to improving off his rookie season, and he missed the playoffs yet again. Still, I was expecting him to return for another year, but apparently his longtime team had already given up on him. As far as Christian Eckes, I believe this will be a big year to show that he belongs in top equipment in the truck series, as despite going winless this year for Thor Sport, he did have lots of impressive runs, with career highs in top fives with 8, top 10s with 15, 
Average finish with a 10.9, and he tied his best overall finish with an 8th place in the final standings. For the former Arkham National Champion, to stay in conversation with the other up-and-coming talents, in my opinion, he will need to have a breakout season within the next two years, otherwise he will likely never progress in NASCAR, and could very well end up out of a riot or settling for second-rate teams for the rest of his career. Jay Garcia will be completing his first full-time season in a new number 35 truck for the team. At only 17 years old, Jake has had lots of success in asphalt late model racing, and he caught the eye of McAnally Hillman Racing earlier this past season, where in five stars in the truck series, he delivered a best finish of 16th. He will not even turn 18 until March of 2023, so I'll have to miss the first two races of the season at Daytona and Las Vegas. I'm guessing this will just be a good development year for Garcia, and I do not expect him to contend for any wins or even finish top 15 the points. As long as he just completes all the laps and gets about, you know, 5, 7, top 10s, I would call his 2023 season a success. Next up is the only really Cup Series news this week, coming from Kyle Busch and Richard Childress Racing. Up until this week, there was a lot of concern about Kyle's sponsorship situation, as it was assumed Tyler Reddick would be dragging all of his sponsors with him to 2311 Racing. But quite the opposite actually happened. Nearly all of Reddick's sponsors from this past season, including Cheddar Scratch Kitchen, Allsco Uniforms, 3CHI, Lenovo, and Bet MGM, will all be staying loyal to Richard Childress Racing and appearing on Kyle Busch's number 8 ride throughout 2023. The other big news from the team was that Kyle will be debuting a new number font, which I will put up on the screen here. It kind of reminds me of the RFK racing style, and to be honest, I like the old font better, but I support it regardless as Kyle is certainly deserving of his own identity at RCR. Before our final big story from the week, here's a bit of ARCA news. Club Racing will be bringing back Casey Carden for five races this coming season, and the two are reportedly looking to secure funding to go full-time in 2024. Cardin is a road course specialist who made two starts for the team this past season where he succumbed to break failure on only lap one at Mid-Ohio, but then rebounded to a solid 15th at Watkins Glen. Also, Zachary Tinkle signed on with Fast Track Racing to compete full-time in the ARCA East Series. This year, he raced in all but one of the 20 National ARCA Series races for both Fast Track and Wayne Peterson Racing, in which he scored a best, best finish of 11th at Kansas and came home 9th in the overall standings. Both Zachary and Casey will be driving for two very underfunded teams, so realistically their goal should just be to complete all the laps, stay out of trouble, and hopefully snag a couple of top tens. The third and final arc of development this week, and definitely the biggest, is that Joe Gibbs Racing has announced they'll be putting 16-year-old late model prodigy William Sawalik, Sawalich, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, uh, into their number 18 car for a total of 20 races between the National East and West Divisions. William has never raced in ARCA before, but I still have to expect at least two, maybe even more wins, because right now in ARCA there's only really four teams, JGR, Venturini, Rev Racing, and GMS, that are really ever able to run up front and win. Also, William, uh, the side note, is from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, which is very much not a NASCAR state. I'm pretty sure there's no, na uh, no active NASCAR or ARCA drivers from there, but that's my home state, so I'll definitely be rooting for him. And lastly, this week is a bit of speculative news on where Haley Deegan will land for the 2023 season. Up until this week, myself and most others were under the assumption that she would go full-time for SS Greenlight Racing in Xfinity, likely with support from Stuart Haas Racing. That was a team she made her Xfinity debut with last season, and besides Stuart Haas Racing themselves, is one of only two other relevant Ford teams in Xfinity, which is important since Haley is a Ford development driver, the only other possible landing spot then being Ryan Sieg Racing. Both SS Greenlight Racing having allied with Stuart Haas before, and then probably being willing to kick out David Starr for her, it just made the most sense. But now, word on the street says that Haley would be going back full-time in trucks for a third year with Thor Sport Racing, and logistically, it kind of makes sense. As already mentioned, with Christian Eckes heading to McAnally Hilgeman Racing, that leaves an open seat for her at Thor Sport. As far as the rest of the Thor Sport lineup, I don't think there would be any way to get rid of either Ben Rhodes or Ty Majeski unless they have a severe lack of funding, as both won races and made the championship four this year. Matt Crafton, on the other hand, barely made the playoffs this past season and had no wins along with only two top fives, but his experience and consistent Menard sponsorship will probably be enough to stay on with his long-term team for at least another year. So on the surface, it looks like all that's left to do is make the official announcement. 
but Thor Sport is a Toyota team. As recently as a couple months ago, Toyota said they would be continuing to give manufacturer support to Thor Sport in 2023, along with a handful of other teams. So at IN, many others who started this theory are getting at is that Thor Sport would have to switch a last second uh, to Ford from Toyota just for Haley Deegan, and that really isn't that big of a reach to be honest, as Haley's the biggest name in the series right now with tons of social media exposure and sponsorship. And on top of that, Thor Sport has been known to switch manufacturers just about once every couple of years at this point. So with all that said, I would have to imagine that as of right now, it's about equally likely that Haley will end up with SS Greenlight in Xfinity or Thor Sport in trucks, but according to all the rumors on social media right now, it's looking like the Thor Sport option is actually more likely. But that will do it for this week's Silly Season Recap. Make sure to comment down below where you think Haley Deegan or even Derek Krause will end up next season as well as any other speculation you guys might have. Also, if you made it all the way through and enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I will be making another weekly news recap just like this next weekend. I'll also be dropping a six-part project on the best part-time drivers of the 2022 season in a couple of weeks, so stay tuned for that as well. But until then, peace out.